Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Starting Your Design Process Away from the Computer Workshop. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cheryl Pang, and I will be co-moderating this workshop along with my fellow Forge eBoard member, Yuka. Today, we have Chris Becker from Better Agency with us, who will be leading the workshop. He is a designer working to better understand how design, education, and creativity motivate and shape human behavior. So without further ado, I'm going to give the floor to Chris. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, it's really great to be here. Um, I'm going to share um, some slides, talk about some stuff that this is, is not meant to be completely silent. You can use the chat to ask some questions. And the, the whole the whole goal is here is to create a dialogue. Um, I'll just, the premise here is uh, there's going to be a little bit of a, of a lecture uh, and then we're going to get uh, um, jump into uh, fig jam and get our hands dirty by using some tools and, and kind of engaging that so we'll, when that comes up we'll sort of share that stuff as we go um and yeah let me just um, share my screen I'll, I'll share my slides are in figma right now so I'll actually share that in the in the slack in this um, uh, chat as well just in case you want to run on that on your own computer and follow along and let me get going here real quick so, um, okay, so prototype. So here are the slides, and let me share my screen, and we can get we can get going. Share screen. Okay, let's get into it. Oops. So okay, what what we're going to be talking about today is um, this right full screen. So welcome welcome to the to the workshop. Um, this is starting away from the computer, um, a case for sketching first in your user experience or, or design process. I'm Chris Becker. Uh, you kind of may know, but again, I gave you a little bit of overview of what we're sort of talking about in today. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my role, where, where my background is. Um, we're going to talk about why starting away from the computer is really beneficial for uh, not only just thinking, but uh, making and learning and, and learning fast. Um, and failing fast as well. And um, and then we'll jump into a fig jam activity to, to kind of get our hands dirty, practice a little bit um, with some tools that are sort of useful for this, um, and even work, work with some artificial intelligence tools to help us with our sketching uh, visualization. And then we'll end with a QA. Um, so a little bit myself, I am a senior user experience designer. I work with an agency called Better. Uh, at a, we're a global innovation agency. I'm in Los Angeles myself, and I also am in a, a adjunct professor at the Art Center College of Design. Which is where I went to. Uh, I went to undergrad at Colorado State, but I have a master's degree from 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 that institution. Um, and I've been practicing design and user experience um, for fifteen plus years. Um, I've worked uh, across a number of agencies, including education, and I've even been responsible for like setting up like UX UI boot camps uh, that run all over the country. Um, I've written a book. Um, I'll share some of these resources that it is, but uh, it, it's through Pack Publishing. It's on it's on Amazon right now called Learn Human, Human Computer Interaction. If you're interested, and I've also done some online courses, online lecturing, uh, and I've actually um, gotten involved with with um, you find folks through um, ADP List, uh, and I'm kind of excited to see some of the stuff that you create um, through things like design hackathons. We were just kind of chatting with this before we started of like. There's the work you do in school, and then there's the kind of real world pressure of how you can test if your ideas work. And things like design hackathons are great ways to bolster your uh, portfolios, but also meet other people's and make sure you know what you're doing. It, this world is really com somewhat complicated, but we all sort of know the same stuff and to kind of work with people under constraints of time and make cool things under tight timelines is like how big companies are built you know, like, like uh, you know, Facebook was created out of like hackathons at, uh, at you know, um, at Harvard University. So uh, that kind of stuff. But again, here's some links. I will share that this deck and these things are there. But like, again, um, I, I write on Medium. Um, and actually, this uh, talk is a sort of sort of a, an extension of an article that I wrote with um, UX Collective, um, you know, back in 2020. So, uh, but the core of it is, essentially my role as a senior user experience designer, I work on the Alley. Um, my core client right now is Allergan Aesthetics. Uh, and we, got, we work on the Alley Rewards app. If you guys aren't familiar with Allergan Aesthetics, they're the uh, pharmaceutical agency that, that makes Botox. 
I don't like I'm not, I don't I don't use Botox. I don't love Botox. It's not like my that's not my like space. But there are interesting problems that that organization is trying to figure out. And the users that are engaging that from patients to practices to the pharmaceutical agency is really kind of fascinating. And we and I help set up and kind of manage some of the, the complexities of that thing and of the of how a rewards program can help drive their business. So it's, it, it's been sort of fascinating. I've been there for, I guess, a little over a year and a half. And gotten to work across wide swaths of, 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 a, of a large organization. Um, so again, this talk, we're going to talk about starting away from the computer. If you have any questions or whatever, please put them in the chat. This is, again, as I was saying, it's not a, it's not a one-way street here. Um, if you have questions, uh, you can interrupt me. I'm, I'm not going to uh, be thrown off by that by any means. Uh, but again, there's a link here that you can kind of read deeper. But oh, I, I'm a huge advocate for working on and using cheap materials. And so let me ask you a question. Who here likes to doodle or sketch or draw? You can either like, you can put it in the chat or just chime up, hold your hand up. Sure, clap. Yeah, great. Hand up. Okay, good. Um, how, how many of you have drawn for like a lot? Like it's like one of the reasons you got into maybe being a designer. Yeah, okay. Some hands up, like, yeah, I always kind of like to draw. I like to think visually. I like to do this. Yeah. Have any of you are engaged in this? Is a, a, a hand drawn sketch for a little thing I was working on. Um, the uh, an exquisite corpse. Have you ever done this exercise? Exquisite corpse with, with party friends or things. Um, you can Google it. Exquisite corpse are, are uh, they've been used throughout history, um, dating back to the, the whatever turn of the century when uh, surrealists were sort of working in their outputs. And uh, even artists like Frida Kahlo actually did this with her friends, but it essentially it's a it's a drawing game, and you like fold a piece of paper in thirds, and you work with three other people, and you collaborate on building a a thing uh, via a uh, uh, via drawing. So a lot of times it's a body, but right? you have rules like a head, a body, and a, and and the feet, and then every every person gets their own thing, but they can't see what what was drawn before. So it's sort of uh, reveals itself as you as you un undo think. But the reality of drawing is drawing is thinking. And one of my favorite quotes is from uh, Le Corbusier, and he says, I prefer dr drawing to talking. Drawing is faster as it leaves less room for lies. Um, if, if you are not familiar with Le Corbusier, obviously uh, he was a famous architect, um, kind of revolutionary in his way of, of like, forwarding modernist thinking. Um, and I call him like a designer's designer, like other designers sort of are completely influenced by him, even like architects, you still wear circle brim glasses because of like his sort of style in relation to that. But he was sort of famous for giving lectures and drawing at the core of solving human problems and architecture. And this is sort of a famous the the modular man um, is a, a set of drawings of his about like thinking human centered requires you to draw and sketch about how the human functions. Um, now, architecture is sort of rooted in the world of user experience design because it's all human-centered, but architecture in particular, it, you have to build things for people, spaces that people can occupy, and they require human you know, interaction with that. But drawing those requires you understanding proportions, right? The proportions of your body, the proportions of your hand and, and space. And that is really about sort of articulating and thinking through what it means to think quickly about a problem. Now, drawing is fundamentally a way to do that. Um, I, I still contend that a pencil and paper are the fastest thinking tools. Um, we learn how to use them from a very young age. I have a, a three-year-old who's like learning how to use crayons and a pencil. And we're like teaching him the motor skills of which to use a pencil, which to communicate, not only just writing, but outputs. But it also is incredibly fast. And we use some, I mean, I have even translated some of my drawing into, you know, a tablet. I, I own a, 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 an iPad that I sort of draw on pretty regularly. But the, the key about it is speed and, and efficiency. Um, and the if you get de relatively decent at drawing, you can communicate a whole range of emo emotional qualities, which is really key to communicating why you're solving a problem in a certain way. Um, now, again, one of the things that I think is really important is drawing is thinking. It is it is literally the execution of thoughts that you have in your head uh, and put onto either paper. And it, if you even boil back, writing is a form of drawing. Like, do you ever do calligraphy or like taking a calligraphy class? Like, 
handwriting or or like a really beautiful cursive drawing it is is drawing it, it it takes art it takes practice and there's a whole process that's associated there and the range of which you can draw sort of uh it gets complicated because people think drawing is on this right side this like realistic rendering of real life things and that requires a certain level of practice and skill and not everyone who draws can render really well um and like can make a photorealistic drawing using their using their materials but we can do a lot of things that are associated with communicating a story and so if you're new at drawing or you're not as comfortable with it you start on the lower end things for built for speed right like stick figures and stick figures are, are amazing because they can uh they can communicate a ton of 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 knowledge right about like what what your users are doing how they're thinking a lot a ton of emotion can be expressed through a circle a square and a line um and that kind of simple simplification here the middle here is actually like taken from a movie um this is from uh uh what is it it's a coen brothers film i, I can't remember what the the uh no room for old men or whatever i'll, I'll think of it in a second but uh the drawings, drawing skills can also be translated into doing things like storyboarding. It's a, it's a specialized skill inside of filmmaking to make sure that like the, they're de devising the story and filming it the way that uh, the camera captures it and the output does it. Now, design, screens, uh, movies, like at, at a certain point, all of this stuff is sort of similar. It has a little bit different media outcomes, but the relationship of how you get from point A to point B still relies on this idea of being able to, to to think and to communicate what that is and one of the things that's really important and you guys may notice is like you're working on apps you use your phone all the time is that like screens are a dominant force in our world right we're on computers right now we spend time on them we probably all have smartphones in our in our pockets or near us uh, at all times and they are designed uh, and they have context and size and part of that screen uh, sort of manipulates even how we think right we like sort of devise user interfaces and we create things and we use the relations to do them but it starts to uh port all the thinking into that object um, and which is totally relevant but you also want to be able to free yourself from not having to be constrained by that as well and drawing can be a really way, great way at which to push at the bounds of what is possible in those things um and uh, your phones can do a lot of things but there's some things that, that a pencil and paper can do faster than you can on those things and the reason that starting away from some of these technologies is really great is that it also allows you to be a little cheaper um now technology helps us do things right build software make websites build applications do this stuff but it also is is there as a way which to feed back into the way we think um this is from another article i wrote associated with um, human computer interaction but essentially drawing is ties together these paradigms right we have a paradigm of the mouse and keyboard which has been a dominant force in how you use a computer for whatever 40 years maybe even longer and the that then has been sort of pushed by secondary paradigms which is things like touch screens and now we have voice ui and now we have artificial intelligence creeping in and we have movement and we have speaker knowledge and we have uh smart mirrors and bio tracking and all these things that sort of create an ecosystem that if you're not understanding how they interconnect you don't you can't relate them and thinking about those things actually can help you draw them out and drawing them and communicating how they work allows the, your audience and you as a designer or someone making in this space to define those things now one of the things I, I really advocate for is that sketching because it is thinking should be shown in your process if you have a little sketch in your notebook or in your output like bring that stuff through to the end product we want to see I, I look at a lot of portfolios as a as a um, designer who sort of mentors and supports students and one of the things I'm always advocating for is show your process right not just that you did a thing but how where did it start and where did it end up and if it started out with a crappy sketch 
in your notebook. Like I, these are mine. I don't think these are particularly good, but they're fast, right? They're talking about a story. They're communicating an idea of some slides that maybe you're on a deck or there's screens that are sort of relatable. And these things then quickly can become solutions. They, they can become an interface and become actual software. And when you're working in a world that moves really fast, you don't, you want to be able to say, Hey, I can sketch a solution on a whiteboard, or I can get a piece of paper and work with a developer and make a thing that we need to make. And it starts a little messy. Messy is fine. Design is messy. <laughs> it is not this clean, like simple one step, two step, three step, four step, even though we want to and we sometimes train it that way. Like the design thinking process is just like you move through each step and then you get the outcome you want at the end. And we all know that that is like actually a, a little bit more complicated, a little bit more challenging in the end. But if you share your, your little processes, you talk about how your sketches work, then the, the uh, visualization or the way at which you can communicate, I can get from, from nothing to a built thing is a lot easier to not only just to see, but to trust that you as a designer can do that. Now, here's some examples. Like here is some stuff I'm working on with Allergan uh, Aesthetics. I, I, I work on some admin tools, which I like to call the, uh, the back of the television um, UX. So it's not, it's not being seen by consumers, but it's being seen by people who work at Allergan. And we had to do this from nuts to bolts took two weeks, actually less. So we did this in a, in a sprint. My design time on this was like two days or something and or less. And we had worked with a working with a product designer and the developers. We had all the, the features and requirements. We sketched it out to make it make sense. And we pulled it into an interface in, in relatively no time. Now, without the sketch, this right side thing would be sort of hard to articulate and and hard to get right. Um, and there's and there's a lot of feedback that can happen in the lowest fidelity phase. Um, you, if you start really low low fidelity, you can sort of iterate quickly and you can sort of eliminate options or say that's not going to work. Or that's that that isn't what that doesn't have all the things it needs. Um, and that's where I sort of advocate for that. And the reason that sort of sketching at the beginning is sort of relevant in here is that ideas at the beginning of any idea of any process, they're not precious. You, you shouldn't you shouldn't care about them enough to hold on to them. They and when you put them in sketch form, they then become options. And you can run out, run through lots of options in sketching. And as designers, our role at the beginning is to explore the options. We should know that something doesn't work because we've actually pressure tested it. And as you get farther up in your career, you can sort of, you've done enough body of work to sort of know what is a solution faster. But as a student, you don't, or as someone's new, you don't know that that's not going to work until you actually give an experiential process to that. And sketching is a really great way to do that or whiteboarding or any of these other things. And what we build is systems. You're working on websites that are responsive or you work on applications that have dynamic data or you work on design systems. Like all this stuff requires a lot of thinking and it also has lots of potentially moving parts. So if you can draw those moving parts and you can sketch the ideas of how they work or how they how they move around or how they how they reorder or how they lay out differently, like all that allows you to build and think about things faster. And sketching essentially forces a designer to iterate. If I start on a piece of paper and it ultimately has to be code in uh in CSS or HTML, there's then steps that take in there. Then we take our sketch into software and i i will attend until i die that software is used for execution you should not be doing that much iterating or sketching or thinking about what you're building in figma you should be drawing figuring that stuff out in the fastest format possible and then using the software which to execute those ideas it's like pulling together making it fast using the tools to speed that speed that stuff up and when you do that really efficiently over time it sort of can help you build that and what's great about sketches is that they're they're not precious. They're ephemeral. If they if they suck or if it doesn't solve the problem, you what can you do with it? You can crumple it up and you can throw it away. And I've worked with a long time in this space, and I've, I, there's this phenomenon that happens in software: is that when students put their stuff into a onto a frame or they put screens together, like they think it matters. <laughs> they think it needs to be that way, and you're like, no, it's just 
it's just one option on Medi, and you should be able to throw that thing away if it doesn't, if it stops to work, right? Or if it is tested and doesn't work. And the reason that I advocate at this stage is that like a whiteboard or a piece of paper or these things, you can actually lay out and see the systems in much more meaningful ways. And tools that help us sort of do that are changing all the time. I mean, there's tons of whiteboarding tools out there that, and we'll even practice with one of those today in using FigJam. But the, the, the thinking that goes into how this stuff works is fundamentally collaborative. And like a designer, UX or UI or product or any of these things, you're not doing it alone. You have to be able to communicate how it works and how it, how it functions and being able to sketch things out quickly allow you to sort of, oh, we don't, oh, it only needs four items or, oh, okay, that has X. We we, we do need these things in the, in the nav. Here's stuff that doesn't work. Okay, we need to go backward and forth. And it also allows you to start to see things like interaction models. Okay, it's a swipe experience or it's a scrolling or you can pinch to zoom or what, like all those things are quote unquote interaction but if you can't show how that works, it's very hard to do that on a static screen. Um, and what's even better is if you're working with team members and the stuff is laid out, you can sort of walk through them with people and like where you where they get stuck or where you get reviewed, like all that stuff can, becomes a way at which to build things and see the systems you're, you're solving problems for in a more meaningful way. Um, and this stuff is not important. Like I see a lot of students like, well, okay, I show you do this, this like prototype I built. And I'm like, well, how'd you get there? You just you just ended up with 25 screens that were the solution that you created. And the answer is no, like it probably started somewhere. And if it starts on a piece of paper or it starts on a whiteboard or it starts in these other things, that should be included in your role because there's a lot of, of iteration and change that happens from initial thought to through to final solution. The, the the other point that I want to make about sketching is I, I sort of reiterated this over and over again, but sketching is incredibly fast and it's cheap. Um, software is sort of cheap as well, but there's the, uh, the level of effort that you as a designer can do. If you practice sketching, you can crank out screens really fast and you can think through the options. And what allows you to do that quickly is that allows you to then say, is this going to work? Like, is this all the information that needs to be on the page? Can I eliminate things? Can I move it? Can I work on hierarchy? Can I change the, the, the scale? Um, it doesn't have all the requirements of what I need if, if I'm working on a... Uh, filter. Do I know all all this all the the data that it needs to kind of relate? And whether that's creating a campaign or whatever, there's there's a million different ways this is applicable. But the design process essentially can embody and be directed out of a simple thing that's quick, and then be quickly turned into. Um, and in the best scenario, sometimes it's when you like can move directly from this into using design components that are already dev and you can work directly from from hand-drawn sketch into uh into into built product um again you have to have more skilled developers working with you with a design system that's sort of buttoned up and fixed or, or, or knowledgeable but when you get teams that are sort of knowledgeable in the way at which this the process works the, you don't have to go through all of the arguous like you know, four rounds of wireframing and three rounds of UI design and four rounds of prototyping and whatever that is, like it all can sort of move itself through the, the sequence quickly. Now, knowing those other steps are necessary at some point is also really essential, but it's, again, it still starts fundamentally at the core of sketching. Um, I, I want to share a couple of resources that uh, I think if you're, if you're, I advocate for sketching all the time, but these are things that should be in your library. You should check out. Um, there's sketching user experiences by Bill Buxton. Um, I'm sort of a huge advocate of, of his work and the, and the things that you do. So if you're not familiar with him um, and you use a Microsoft computer in any way, whether it's Teams or any of that other stuff, like his ideas have like fundamentally um, been as, uh, associated with uh, with Microsoft for a long time. Um, and uh, and then there's also a Ben Crothers uh, Presto sketching, which is really about using simple drawing uh which to communicate product and design thinking um and that includes things like diagramming uh talking about how people interact with systems and and, and engaging in that space uh so uh in that if, if you have any questions what we're gonna do uh uh next is we're gonna all jump into a fig jam activity and i'm gonna put this in the, in this in this in the slack chain in the uh, chat um so just let me escape here real quick let me come grab this Oh, I think I just shared the link. I oh, hope you it's the, the right link. one. Okay, great. Yeah. 
So what I so, want everyone to do is we are now going to jump into the interactive portion of, of, of this uh, lecture. And we're going to work on a uh, on sketching ourselves. So if you guys are not familiar with with FigJam, that, that's fine. FigJam is the like, sort of whiteboarding uh, collaborative space of um, I think I can put this thing. I'll do it in a second. Um, of of Figma, uh, there's other there's other tools like this, like Miro, and I think Apple has one that's sort of uh, called Freeform. There's there's a lot of these. The, the 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 competitive landscape for working in in FigJam or in whiteboarding space is fine. I think Fig, Figma works really great, or FigJam works really great. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna all practice some sketching. So I'm gonna come over here. And I can actually have you all like uh, spotlight me. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, we're gonna practice some sketching. And what I want you to do is I want you to grab this uh, this box and you can copy it. You can copy it by holding down shift and dragging over or option, option drag. Or you can also copy, like copy and paste. But whatever, just drag a board for yourself anywhere. You could drag it below into this space. We're gonna put them down here in the sketching samples at, at some point. Um, if you if you change the aspect ratio, that's it's not that end of the world. Um, but I don't want you to um, use my drawing. I want you to use just a, a straight. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. Now, one of the things that's, that's useful about Fig uh, Fig Jam is uh, that you can also um, we can. What I also want you to do is I want you to grab out a uh, a sticky note. Get this thing. So sticky notes are down here, and just drag a sticky note onto your onto your your drawing space. There you go. Yep. It doesn't need to be that big. Whatever you can make it a little bigger, uh, Yuka. Um, it's fine. What I want you to do is essentially just um, add your location. What why I'm having you drag a sticky note is it'll automatically add your name, so you don't have to put your name there. The sticky note like automatically includes your name, um, and then we're gonna group that object together. So add a sticky note and I can show you how to do this over here. Here's my thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to grab a sticky note. I'm going to change my location to Los Angeles. That's where I'm located. I can make that extra large or large, I guess. And then I'm going to copy the two of these by hitting shift and I'm going to group them. This is just like your drawing space. Everybody got one? It's looking like it. If your sticky notes a little big, Grace, that's fine. We're gonna get try and make it look like uh, like this over here. We're not gonna draw a teddy bear, but I'll give you the prompt here in a second. But once you get that grouped, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you five minutes, and I all want you to draw using the the marker tool so in the marker tool you can sort of change I, I would recommend using a thick line you could also use the mark the um the highlighter if you want but just use the pen you can make it any color you want it's up to you but i we're gonna draw a house in outer space and i'm gonna turn on a timer for five minutes and we could i guess i could even do some ambient music i don't know if you guys can hear that I'll turn the I'll turn the music off. <laughs> we love the music. Um, so uh, we have around five minutes to just draw, draw whatever you want. But, but the prompt is a house in outer space, and we're gonna sketch this pretty quickly. Um, and I'll even do one myself. But I'll sort of zoom in here. I'm gonna take a screenshot just so I have some. Sure, you guys do that. Ooh, you got a scribble. Is that space? Space. Space. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and here, let me just capture the screen now. Good.
you can zoom in. Like, don't don't feel like you have to. Uh, yeah, you're all on your own screens, but you can zoom in. Oh, he's got a rocket down there. All right. Oops. All right. Ooh, there's the moon. Good. Okay. Yeah, you can bring in color. Don't feel like you just have to sketch. You can whatever. There's there's other options, but just we got five minutes. You got a constraint. That's pretty. That's pretty. It's that's pretty. We're using tape. Nice. Mm -mm. Okay. No trial scat. It's on it's on a oh, he's got a cat there. Cat. He's drawing a cat. Good. Kitty cat. Stars. Ooh, coloring. Moon. Good. Okay, we got we have 20 seconds left. So with the last 20 seconds, do your final things. If you haven't added your location into your um uh into your sticky note, just go do that. Um just so we know where you are in the world. And we'll uh we're gonna be finishing up here in a second. Okay. All right. Let's let, let we're just gonna zoom in on the a couple of these and take take some look. Okay. Ooh, here here's one. This is from uh, Yuong Park. Nice. You got a welcome sign. Spaceman. Got some color. You're on what looks like uh, Saturn. Yeah. In our in our solar system, I'm assuming yes, and you can whatever you can chime in or do that. Um, you got some stars, great. Ooh, this is this one is just a like a floating house. Nice. Uh, anyone else? Uh, oh, here this one has an alien house. Ooh, I like this one. It's like a mushroom. Yeah, from uh, from Yuka. There's a window. I like you. You a window. Like it's you're really inside. But it's it's in a space. Earth's on the outside to keep the radiation out. I guess that's those are radiation lines from Earth because we polluted it. Is that what's going on? <laughs> the aliens are like, I don't want to go to your planet. You ruined it. You ruined it. Um, okay, good. Here's one on the here's one on the moon with an alien. So the, oh, there's another moon there. I guess the, the Earth would have that as well, huh? Because it would operate like you would see the the Earth in its in its shade. They're on the moon. Good. Okay. Oh, here's who's is this one? Is this is this Charles? You got a you got a kitty cat at your are you on a uh, is this a um 
is is this sort of uh it looks like like an oyster <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, I, I, I like oysters myself so i you know i i know they're they're but an oyster flying through space great uh you got you got a, a a galaxy there which is which is awesome okay so in five minutes which is pretty fast I, i'm kind of impressed all of you sort of picked up basic tools do any of you any of you love your drawing you're like this is an artistic masterpiece and I'm, I'm gonna pin it on the wall i'm gonna put it in my portfolio i'm gonna no you see some head shakes um why not You can come up mute or whatever if you want. It's just very rough. It's very maybe rough. I, maybe I like the idea of not the sketches. <laughs> okay. So, so again, it took you five minutes, right? It, the, if if you get if you were to do this fifty times over, would your house look a little different? And you were given more time if you practiced. So, the the reason I I put a time constraint on things like drawing is that it actually is essential to your thinking process. The outcome and the byproduct of the thinking is constrained by the level of effort that you have in the time that you're given to do it. And so you don't have to love it, but it, but I, I don't see anyone here that I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding what it is. Everyone has been able to communicate a house, even this one, which is very weird. And I sort of love it from Cheryl. It still has a door. It still has it still has a handle. I still can see that these are windows, maybe, right? And there's still planets in the background. So we all can see that these are somewhat houses in space, correct? All in five minutes. Now, the with practice or with other things, you could maybe draw faster, but the you can still end up communicating a thing. And I and what I recommend is anytime you sketch giving yourself a time constraint. I need to produce X number of screens in an hour or whatever that is. And then the value that is exchanged in that time frame is associated under that, that and that alone. And then you can iterate those things. And if you need to improve them or you need to make them better, you can use an extended tool. And so we're going to now do the, what I want everyone to do is just, um, Make sure to group your drawing because these are all individual lines, but just uh, drag around your drawing and just hit the group the the group thing. I can do this for for you and Park. Does that make sense? I just want you to have them grouped so so we can move them instead of just moving one line, just group your whole. See how you move the background and not that yeah, there you go. okay. And so, so now we're going to go do the step two of this process, which is like, okay, we have some cool drawings. We have some things you do. You have a, an oyster, a house and an oyster in space, which is great. Like th this, these are your, this is your version one prototype. And we're going to now go do this again using a software tool, an artificial intelligence called Scribble Diffusion. Have any of you ever used Scribble Diffusion? Here, I'll put the, the link in. Uh, the chat. Okay, so I'm going to give us another five minutes. And what I want us all to do is, um, I'm sorry. Okay, so what we're going to do, I put Scribble Diffusion. What I want you to do is you have your house in space. You sort of have the essence of what that thing was, whether it was a mushroom thing with a cloud and a cat and you had a, 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 a house on a planet or whatever that is. And what I want us to do is I want us to come back in and redraw that, resketch that. If you want to make some improvements to your drawing or like, oh, that, that house didn't look right or I didn't, I, I, you know, maybe that, that planet was a little weird. I want us to iterate, do a second version in Scribble Diffusion, give it a description and then see what the artificial intelligence produces for us, right? So it's a, it's a drawing and visualizing assist program. And we're going to see how well this AI helps us in our sketching ability. So is everybody clear here? So what I want you to do, go do that in Scribble Diffusion and then take a screenshot of it and come paste it back into um, into this space below when you're sort of done with that. And what I'll do is I'll turn on a timer for another five minutes. 
And we're going to go do that in Scribble Diffusion. Does that make sense? OK, great. Let, let's get going. Um, and I can go. Uh, since I can't see what you guys are scribbling, I'll, I'll go do one myself. And I'll show you. So, it has, so we have the, 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 the display. Oops, not stop sharing. This thing floats around very annoying. Okay, so I'm going to clear this and I'm going to draw a Scope, radar dish. Space, so we have a galaxy here. Planet, make this Earth. All right. And then I'm, the one of the keys here is um, don't just type in a house in space, but actually describe your drawing a little bit more specific. Um, like my, it's still going to be a house in space, but mine is is a house riding a house riding a comet um, through in space Earth in the background, Earth in the background. Um, I'm going to wait a second for you guys to get close to finishing your drawings. Um, I, we have, I think we have another half a minute. To go to, yeah, we have a, a minute left, minute 30. So um, at 30 seconds or so left, um, hit the go button and then screenshot it. Um, and if, if what it renders is really terrible, you can try and like fix some stuff and re render it again. Like it'll, it'll keep coming up with different versions of what you've created, but um, just choose the first one. What I want us to do is take a screenshot of what of what our thing represents and uh, and then play, paste it into our um, uh, into the fig jam space below. One minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's with the last 30 seconds. I'm going to let this thing resent, re result in some in a in a solution. I don't know what it's going to make. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Here is my, here is my house on a comet in space. Oops, I need to, please grab the description when you take a screenshot. Um, and now I'm gonna go paste that back into the space below. Uh, 
screenshots. Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah, and then let's do the same. Grab a sticky note and just put your name and location, just put your location. Um, and then we can group these together as well, just so we have it. Okay, let's, let's take a look at some of these. Ooh, nice, close. This one is actually, um, pretty accurate to your drawing. I like the I like the weird planet it made in the background and some some space that you would never never make. Oh, the look at the dog, weird. And this mushroom thing, it's trippy. Oh, this boat. Look, it made you it it, it made what was clearly a, uh, a, a an oyster shell. Uh, oh, you made it a sailing ship. Okay, so that's why. So you. By describing it, you sort of know what it can produce for you. Um, but it like you you and you didn't have a background, but it like it you know it's making some liberties with with what space equals back there. Oh, weird! Look look at look at the alien. It's weird. Such weird stuff. Oh, very traditional. Hmm. Just a house. It knows. Same here. Sort of produces i like that the the flame on the bottom is the leaf for some reason like it, it thought that was it, it thought it was uh green powered rather now the the reason i bring up these tools whatever sketching it's fast oh here's oh ooh, look at this one it's it's like mario in space this is great it's exactly what we would imagine of some like weird trippy thing or alice in in, in wonderland as you go down that hole now again, by describing a mushroom house, it's going to make a mushroom house, and the 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 reason that sketching is the fun the foundation of this is that like the computer is just interpolating words and visuals, and yes, the quality of your sketch may result in a different outcome that you've created, but like look at here, like this has a rendering that is very would maybe take what a lot longer. I, I love this stuff because it would be things that I would I don't know how to make that I would never make those design decisions because that's not me as a designer. But the quickness and the speed at which is it can sort of communicate some of this stuff took you five minutes of a sketch plus what a computer can render for you. Now, the relative or not too distant future of being able to utilize and and visualize thinking is at a it's at an inflection point that we have, we're just it's going to be insane some of the stuff that comes out but it will be in it'll be important on designers people like yourselves to use these types of tools drawing writing like the foundational skills are going to be what the world needs cuz we are going to be tuning artificial intelligence way before we're like asked to crank out a thousand computer screens because that's not actually a relatively rel like useful use of our time, but being able to come to the right idea, tell the right stories through the ways in which we visualize information and communicate that through drawing and writing is essential. So hopefully you found this. I found these like weird and whatever, like this pug over here. It's like you drew a you drew an effective pug and it rendered it for you effectively, right? It's like this there's other things so of like, okay, great. That's all I needed was this quick little thing, and it can produce what you needed to produce. Um, and in a not too distant future, there may be things to do things like make it a vector drawing or make it photorealistic or make it um in film noir or make it in uh <laughs> in turn of the century modernism or make it in cubism like all those things are parameters that, that establish stylistic decisions and but we as designers are responsible for tuning and understanding what that equals and that's not that much different than the design process at its core from a pencil drawing through to what the final solution is going to look like in the first place so um that's our uh uh, our workshop <laughs> hopefully you guys had some fun these are these are some weird ones. Oh, here's a weird one down here oh yeah 
look, Saturn. This is amazing. This is weird. <laughs> Stars everywhere. Um, and the, what's also sort of interesting, if you go back to Scribble Infusion, if you, it'll, it'll like do it, if you hit it again with the same drawing, it'll produce a different outcome. Like it's never going to give you something exactly the same, which I also find sort of fascinating. Or if you eliminate some things or move some stuff around, it'll do things a little differently for you every time. Um, that's sort of the, the surprising joy of it, but also this like, okay, well, how do we know that we're getting what we want? And that's the tuning recycle that not, that is very similar to that of iterating a sketch, right? I'm refining it. I'm, I'm modifying what is there, what isn't there. I'm changing the quality of the line and the quality of the, of the, of the visualization of the sketch. And then it produces the outcomes you need. Any questions? Okay, we want to take questions, but we only have seven minutes -ish left, so yes. we can do the poll first, and then if people have further questions, they can reach out to you if that's okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, I didn't realize okay. you whatever. No, we were it was really fun. We were having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, take a screenshot. Sorry, I forgot that I'm the one that has to put, put up the poll. Hold on. <laughs> Here, let me launch that. So Chris has a poll for us. So if everyone could fill out this this poll. And thank you. Thank you again, Chris. This was a super fun activity. Yeah. <laughs> I loved seeing everyone's drawings. Yeah. And and I know that you guys are all working on a project. It starts really low fidelity, but like tools like Big Jam sketching collab like just think about we all did this individually but what if like the two like two of you came together and had to draw a a uh a house in space like th that changes the parameters of the decisions that are made the output and that is fundamentally design right like how you combine and think together and these sort of tools like fig jam or whiteboarding and this stuff is like that's the power they offer and the, why I think Fig Jam is actually winning in this space is they've made it a little bit more fun, right? There's things like music and you can give high fives and you can do polls and you can do these things that like make it a little bit more, uh, it's lower barrier to entry. Um, but this can also be used not only just for sketching, but it can be used at a like the highest quality tilt. Like uh, I've been, I've worked with teams that do like all their high-end UI is sort of translated into, into Fig Jam and then translated into, into products and services. So um, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah, that's great. Um, so I just shared all the like information uh, that you provided for us in the chat. But if you have like a contact information that you prefer for us to reach out with, um, uh, yeah, you probably drop that in the um, chat. As well. So I, I mentor on on ADP list. If you want to book time to kind of chat with me, you're welcome <laughs> to do that or whatever. LinkedIn is sort of the the standard place to go. Um, I, I'm available to sort whatever. I'm open. I love talking about the stuff. If you have things you're working on, and, and what I can kind of go back to is that like these things may seem seem fun and weird and sort of low fidelity, but they are actually the kernel of what makes good ideas, makes things worth building in the future. And that kind of stuff should be shown and be visualized and not be hidden away in your design process. Show that work on these things at this level because this has a lot more like th th there's way more in the promise of like well what did you get like i love asking questions like well what what did you delete in your it, what didn't make it in that you thought should or what what direction did you go that you did that like your client told you or your users told you that you shouldn't go down or whatever that is right and there's so many times i'm just looking at students work or people's work just in general and none of that exists they don't show it all is a rose colored glass of what it is and the design process is sort of messy and weird and fun and the tools that we have available to us can help us do that more effectively so if you have any questions, we have a couple of minutes, but like, I know you, whatever, you guys, I got another uh, talk that comes after this. Um, but I was, it was, I found this really fun and I'm glad you all participated. So, so meaningfully, um, because really these things are pretty great. So I want to share the results. Um, cool. Yeah. Again, Charles, everyone, th th thank you for including me. Um, uh, 
you guys have access to this and um and i can put them in the slack channel as well if you want to hit me up i'm on the the forge the slack as well so you can ask questions to me directly if you have anything that's sort of burning that i didn't get to yes thank you chris it was so much fun um and i i'm sure everyone else had so much fun as well so this marks the end of the workshop um thanks everyone for joining us and thank you chris again for this very interactive fun activity today and your expertise um so we have um our next workshop is accessibility first at 1 p.m est which is in two minutes so we're looking forward to seeing you all there as well thanks again chris thanks everyone that's great thank you Bye.